Uh, shall we see? Let's have a look who's in my green room this evening, ladies and gentlemen. My first guest is a handsome, young, Welsh actor and movie star. You'll remember him from Notting Hill, loads of other movies. Here's, of course, Rhys Ifans. There he is. Uh, Rhys, of course, is a proud Welshman whose first language... Am I right in saying this? Your first language is Welsh? Uh, bonjour. <laughs> I speak a little bit of Welsh myself. Rhys, go and say something to me in the language of princes. All right. Rolliodd lorri lawr yr hiw. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> Not only beautiful, but true. I do indeed need a hand vacuum, my alpaca. Rhys, a fans, ladies and gentlemen, he's on the show this evening. I'm delighted to be with us. Thank you for joining me, Rhys. OK. My next guests are just about to get... Please welcome Mr Rhys, a fans, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We've got to go up here. Oh, no. Well, we've got some steps today. Great to have you here. Wow, you're looking good. You're looking, Thank you very much. Look, you're looking slender. You're looking very slender. Yeah, I'm feeling good, yeah. Uh, you know, I just reminded me, before we start the interview, just hearing the guys sing that a bit of a kink song there, the music in the film is fabulous. Yeah. And you don't get to hear music from that period blaring out of speakers so much anymore. No, no, no. When you do, you realise it's really quite kind of, kind of, you know, modern sound, but also sort of ballsy and dirty. What a, a fantastic sound. Yeah, very expensive. Was it to get all those clips, yeah. uh, use all the stuff there? Um, let me, uh, let's explain what the film is about for people who might not be that aware. It, it, it's not a true story as such, but it's based on... No, it's, yeah, it's, it's inspired by um, Radio Caroline and, and, and other pirate radio stations that um, were around in the 60s before... Certainly, I was born. Don't know about your good self there, Jonathan. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's inspired by that. And you know, and, and I, you know, when I was sort of researching the film, I had no idea that you know uh, there was up to 25 million people listening to these stations at any given time. Because back then, the BBC, uh, there was no commercial radio in the UK. Was Nothing. There? Yeah. You know, they they debated you then, the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, they didn't play pop music much, did they? I mean, the no. music would be about an hour or so a day or two No, hours a day. I mean, yeah, and unless it was like an organ or you were in a, in a ball gown, it wasn't music, you know? Uh, but, you know, and these guys came along and they were kind of... Yeah. I guess they were taking a big risk as well. Yeah, yeah, it was, you know, and they were broadcasting, you know, off the coast of Britain, off these ships, which kind of gives it a, a you know, a romance as well. Yeah. Um, and they were genuine pirates, you know, and these guys were like demigods, you know? Anyone who, you know, pipes that amount of rock and roll into British households you know, should be celebrated. Um, now, it's shot on a boat, some of it. Some of it presumably was shot in studios. Would I be right, the interiors? Yeah, all the exteriors shot on, shot on a real boat off the coast of England. Yeah. S the south bit. Yeah, OK. Weymouth. Can you be more specific? Yeah. Or Weymouth, well, Weymouth, yeah, it's close to yeah. France, yeah. yeah. OK. So every morning they'd give us these, you know, two little tablets... They said it was for seasickness, but I mean, who knows? It might mean they might be there just to make us funny. So you, you know? enjoyed the you enjoyed the experience of pill popping first thing in the morning. Well, I mean, you know, pill in the morning gets you through the day, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but then, but actually, when we were filming in Shepperton Studios, the the um, the set was on a like a rocking mechanism as well, so we had to take seasickness. Well, now this cover. is called I believe it's called a gimbal, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, because right. I thought we would test your abilities. I thought I would do part of the interview as if we're on a boat. <laughs> OK, and this is quite exciting. I've never done this before. Okay. That's pretty good, isn't Ooh, it? Oh, man, <laughs> steady on. It's actually quite, it's quite horrible, because even though it's only a little bit... You do it does make you dizzy. feel a bit nauseous, It's quite it? nice, isn't it? And lonely. Look, look, look. And, look, it's really, and lonely? How yeah. can you feel lonely? Come on, cabin fever. Look at that, look out there we've got. But I'm here for that. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> OK, so we could carry on chatting. Oh, no, let's do it. Yeah. OK, so yeah. Uh, you play uh, the cool DJ, and there's a cool DJ there before you come back, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. Who's, um... <laughs> who's, um... Uh, just, yeah. I can't concentrate, man. There's birds flying around. <laughs> You've got to focus. Imagine you're at sea. We're, we're working at sea. All we're right. doing a pirate talk show from, from the sea. OK. Um... I'm going to get scurvy in a minute. You don't get scurvy from motion. You get that from a lack of fruit in your diet. Right, I know. Don't keep making Pass it... Pass me through. that apple before I die. <laughs> um, yeah, so Philip Seymour Hoffman, the best actor in the world. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he's great, isn't he? This is, <laughs> this is quite horrible, isn't it? It's horrible. <laughs> I'll stop the shit. It's really doing my head in. <laughs> oh, man. 
I can hear my apple now. You know what, though? I think you're a bit of a wuss because uh, I didn't have any pills and I was quite able to function and perform normally on that ball. And then you're, you're sitting there complaining and you need an apple to get you through it. Yeah, but no one's seen the mess you made on the carpet. <laughs> Uh, but what a great film. What an exciting project to be involved in. And when Philip Seymour Hoffman turns up, here you've got an actor who is, you know, an Oscar winner. A giant, yeah. Okay, a truth. And it must be a little bit intimidating, I would thought, for you guys when he well, turns you, up. Well, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, there's a little bit of that, but more, more so than that, you know, if you know you're working with someone as accomplished as him, it's kind of a luxury, you know. He's phenomenal. Do no. you feel, though, you have to kind of... Uh, and, and this is not me saying that you guys need to, but you feel like, oh, we really better get our act together. We've got to raise our game. Yeah, man, like, do your own work, not me. Really. Mm. It seems quite odd that you're now still eating the apple. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought I'd, do, I thought I'd have the apple with the scurvy gag, but actually I'm enjoying it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really a little nice. bit jealous that I haven't Go got on, an apple. No, not now, you smell. <laughs> <like me. laughs> uh, OK, how... <laughs> Sorry, I put it away. <laughs> I feel like Adam. OK. Uh, you know, did you, working with all those guys on board, and, and presumably you did form quite a close relationship, because that's one of the nice things about the film, is you get the feeling, and I guess that's what it's about as much as anything, is the friendship between these men yeah. and the experience. And it does seem like a... It's kind of something you, you want to experience, you want to be there. Was it making it? Did you feel that? Yeah, and I, I think that's what the film's about. You know, the, the, the music, for one, is... A, it's a character in the film, you know. It's, it's, it's like a musical where no-one has to sing. Um, but, you know, if, if there is kind of a... A message in a film. It's about camaraderie yeah. and being in a gang, you know, or what have you. Now, you're still involved in music, aren't you? Because this is another thing. And when I first heard this about you, and I remember we mentioned this last time on the show, you, you were the lead singer, the first lead singer of the band Super Furry Animals, yeah, weren't you? Yeah, before Which, they were good. Yeah, they're, but they're a proper big band now. Yeah. Still going strong. And, you were, and you're still in music. You have a new band, don't you? Yeah, we're called The Pef, okay. which means The Thing in yeah. Welsh. Uh, we've got an album out called The Golden... This kind of happened... We're all mates, you know, and it kind of, it's kind of become its own little monster. And then we've got a second album coming out in September called and, and Crystal you, Peth. Do you sing in Welsh? Um, in English and Welsh. Welsh songs are kind of longer because of the words. Be <laughs> because... The words are well, like you know, like um, you, you know, when you, sometimes if you make a Welsh-speaking film, which doesn't happen often, you do you do a take in Welsh and a take in English. You know, so so if you're doing a sex scene in Welsh, lasts longer than a sex scene in English. You're just trying to pretend Welsh men are better at it. Uh, aren't no. you? <laughs> <laughs> you're just trying to boost the tourist crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so if I said to you, I love you, Reese. I've always loved you. Yeah. From the moment I saw you eat that apple, I knew I wanted you. Yeah. <laughs> Kiss me, you beast. Yeah. Right? So I say that. Do you the car ready, Jonathan? Do you the car ready, Arioid? Or moments where she's in bitter avalna, and she draws him on a young hen wheel. You know what? Uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I may, uh... I'm going to be about, you had me at Henville. <laughs> <laughs> that means beast. Yeah? Does it really? Yeah, so big that was, beast. But that's a lot more. Uh, you yeah, said many man. more words there. Why waste letters? But why, why so many extra words there? Huh? There must have been extra things you said there. No, there are more words in English than there are in Welsh. You know, uh, you know the English language has um, probably got the, the biggest uh, you know, vocabulary of, of any other language, but Welsh has less, less words, so then you have to resort to metaphor to describe oh, what so you've you're... got a word for, so that makes us innately more poetic than right. your good selves. So instead of saying apple, you would say small round red thing from Tree of Life. <laughs> you're fluent. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard Welsh, uh, I've watched Welsh TV shows, and sometimes they'll just slip an English word in because they can't be bothered well, to be I mean, poetic. what's the English word for blancmange? What's the English word for cafe? What's the English word for coffee? Yeah. Yeah? So come on, Yeah, man. but, no, but... But I do. I yeah, know. I know what you mean. I've got English friends who really, you know, they enjoy watching Welsh telly, and they'll hear people, you know, Sarah Kamraig, Sarah Kamraig, Sarah Kamraig, Sarah Kamraig, Sarah Kamraig, fiberglass. You know, that's a that's a sex scene I really want to oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, here's the thing that's exciting as well is uh, the boat. The rocks is out. I think is it next week? Yeah. I'm very much looking forward to that, and, and I think we have a clip of you with your band before. Let's do that first, shall we? Yeah. Go on. Uh, this is with, with his band, The Peth.
No, that's from our last album. Uh, that's from Golden Mile. Our it sounds good. Last album. Thank you very much. Uh, the next movie that we'll see you in, I guess the next one coming out, will be you playing Howard Marks. Yeah. Mr. Nice. He had his yeah. And he's a, a very interesting, quite a complex sounding bloke. Uh, but he was essentially, he was a drug smuggler, he was a drug uh, importer. He was a, an international hashish smuggler. It, you know, it's such a fascinating story. It's a real kind of odyssey. You know, he, he first time he was arrested, he, he convinced the court and the judge that he was a member of MI6 <laughs> and got away with it. Good boy. And then, um, uh, and then finally the, the DEA caught up with him and extradited him from Spain and um, sentenced him to 25 years wow. in a high security American prison. However, he was released after 10 years because he'd taught many of these prisoners how to read and write and helped them, you know, with their legal issues and what have you. And so he was released after 10 years and um, he wrote a book called Mr. Nice. And, you know, now he's kind of taking the show on the road and it's kind of been a film been trying to make for years. You know, he's been out of prison for about 13, 14 years now. Presumably you met Howard and you spoke to him about yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, well, so. I, you know, I've known... You know, I met Howard when he came out of prison 13 years ago at a Super Furry Animals gig and I made him sign a whole packet of Rizzlers. <laughs> <laughs> we started with one and I got greedy, so he's like, we signed them up. I'm assuming you still have them all, none of them are actually... Yeah, here. absolutely, yeah. Right. And, and, and then we kind of made a, you know, a gentleman's agreement then that if ever a film was to be made of his life that I, I would play him and, you know, and amazingly, it, it, it's happened, you know. He's an extraordinary man. Um, and so we were filming it in Wales. We shot half of it in Wales, and then we shot the second half in Spain. And anyway, I, 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 we was um, staying in this hotel in Alicante, and Howard, Howard came out to visit. And um, this is a couple of weeks ago, and, um, and I'm doing Harry Potter after this. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, so, no, wait a minute, man. So you're just playing Mr. Nice, yeah. smuggling the hashish in, yeah. and then you're going straight into being a wizard with a bunch of kids. Yeah. You, you want to make sure you don't get your parts mixed up there. You don't yeah, wanna... No, don't want to mix your mules up. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so then these people from Harry Potter had to fly up to Spain to uh, fit me for my, for my wizard outfit, right? <laughs> so I'm in this room in a big, you know, the sleeves, the lot, you know, with a big pointy hat and all that. And Howard, Howard's wandering past the room like this with a little, little fella on the go. <laughs> and and he, said, he says, I never used to wear stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said, no, 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 Howard, no, 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 don't panic, man. No, no, this is like these, this is for another film. These are the people from Harry Potter. And he went, hello, Howard Marks, Harry Potter. <laughs> Uh, how great to have you here. Thank you uh, very much. I'm really looking forward to seeing the Howard Marks movie. That'll be good. Yeah. Uh, the Boat of the Box comes out April the 1st. That's uh, next week. Um, great film. Loved Thank it. You I love all much. of Richard Curtis movies, but I loved it. And it's great music in it as well. Yeah. Fantastic soundtrack. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, go and see it. Uh, you'll love it, I'm sure. Mr. Wee Thank you, Wee. Nice to meet you. I love that Howard Marks one. Yeah. Mind the step going yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, now we had a nice email this week.